Bum, bum. Oh, yay. Hello, uh, my name is Josh. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of the browser company. Uh, I'm coming to you from the Swiss French Alps, uh, where I am visiting my wife's uh, family. I'm sorry, I'm a little sweaty. I just got off the trampoline with my niece. Uh, but I, I'm really excited to record this video, as odd as the format may be, because three years ago, uh, in this very same place on, on my annual trip to Switzerland, I first came up with the idea for the browser company, and after a long walk and a few days of thinking, wrote this long essay to Hirsch, uh, and that became the browser company. And three years later, I have really, really big, exciting news to share with you. I want to talk about three things today. I think this is as big a moment for what we're doing as that founding, founding story three years ago. Um, three things. One, I want to show some graphs of how ARC is doing. Uh, it's really exciting. The second is... I want to kind of pull back the current a little bit and tell you where we think we're going in the next five years or, or really why we're all here, what our actual aspiration is, because the browser company names a little bit of a misdirection. And, and third and finally, uh, I want to share some news. We raised uh, a round of financing that I'm really excited about and it's pretty unique. Um, I know I've said excited a few times. I'll tone it down a bit, but um, here we go. So first things first, how's Arc doing? You've probably been seeing more tweets. Hopefully you've been using it. Uh, uh, and and the spoiler alert is it seems like people really like this thing we've built. Uh, I we're pretty surprised. Uh, not not we were confident and we are confident that we can make something amazing. But uh, to be honest, we look at the product and see so much that's so wrong with it. But let me just get into it. Um, I want to first show you how many people are using the product at least five days a week. This is a graph uh, over time uh, since we started of the number of people that used Arc at least five out of seven days a week, right? So at the very least, it's their default browser and they likely really, really like it if they're using it that much. Thousands and thousands of you now, and you can see how much progress we've had uh, in the last few months. Uh, but on top of that, what we're even, you know, just as grateful for is, it's not just that people tr that try Arc seem to love it or seem to like it, you are all telling your friends about it, or it seems like you're telling your friends about it because um, for every invite we send to Arc, we see more than one waitlist signup come back organically, and that means because you, the people are, that are that are using it, are telling your colleagues and your friends about it, and we so appreciate it. This is our our list of signups, um, and and the reason that that's really big is because uh, in many ways we've been so focused on just building the basics, right? Making sure Arc is fast and secure and has extension support and has keyboard remapping. Yay, profiles coming soon. And uh, it only feels like, oh my goodness, that was not a flattering pause. Um, it only feels like right now, because retention is really good and because it seems like the growth engine is humming, that we can really take a step back and refocus on why we all joined this company and why we're building this company. And I don't want to tell you about it um, because it, it may not be what you expect. Um, so in order to tell you where we want to be in five years, I want to start in the past a bit um, and, and take you through the, the arc of computing. Um, maybe you know why, where that, part of the reason that we called it arc. Um, so the arc of computing, really, I like to think about it, uh, started with... Um, IBM, so I mean, biased, I was a summer intern at IBM, not that I have an special loyalty to them, but International Business Machines, that was the first computing company uh, that I think uh, truly made waves at the level of a company like Apple. And um, IBM, you know, the original computers, uh, they, they, they existed in rooms. <laughs> like this is the IBM 360, really the first uh, line of computers that was was incredibly successful. And it filled up rooms. It cost many, many millions of dollars. It had multiple people to operate them. But most importantly, they were for businesses. They were for corporations, international business machines, IBM. It wasn't a thing that sat on your desk. It wasn't for the individual. Um, it, was, it was transformative, but like what we think of as a computer has changed a lot. And it started as a business computer. And for you know a couple decades now, we've been in really the second, what I like to think of the second phase in evolution of computing, and that's the personal computer. So uh, obviously Apple, I'm, I'm on an Apple Apple computer right now, changed my life. I got this see-through iMac uh, on the right-hand side uh, when I was, I don't know, probably like 10. I, I, I just, I mean, anyone that's watching this video, I know you had one of these moments with, with computers. Uh, mine was with an iMac, but obviously the original Macintosh, some would even say even was even before the Macintosh with the homebrew club and, and the one that was made. 
But the point is, after the business original business computer phase, computers went into this phase of being extremely personal. Uh, the two Steves put them on our desks. Uh, they gave us input mechanisms and interfaces such as the keyboard uh, and the mouse and uh, fonts. And again, they weren't the first, but they really were the ones that popularized it. And ever since then, what we think of as a computer is this kind of hunk of metal uh, that sits on our desk in front of us or sits on our lap. Um, it's pretty incredible, but, but it really hasn't changed all that much uh, in a couple decades. Which gets us to what, why we're actually here. So yes, we're building a browser, but we're not just building a browser. We view the browser engine as the foundation for the next evolution in computing, which we believe uh, are internet computers. And so we want, our aspiration is for ARC to be the first popular internet computer. Uh, and uh, I'll let your mind wander a little bit about what that means. I don't want to fill in too many of the blanks. And quite frankly, we're still figuring it out ourselves, but we think that we're on the precipice and it's about time for, for for the next, for something new. I think we're all just a little bit bored and, and something about these machines and the software on them don't feel like they've met this moment that we're at right now. Um, and, and we think uh, the next wave of computing is gonna be internet computers and, that, and we want ARC to be that. I want my son who's 10, uh, sorry, my son who's one and a half, when he is 10, the same age I got that iMac, I want his first computer to be ARC, to be an internet computer. And the reason that we're so uh, bullish that, that is, this is the moment for it, whether it's us or someone else, we have no doubt that internet computers are going to be the next, next category. Um, the reason we're so bullish is, I mean, let's just look at this. You know, I love, I love this, this personal computer. I love this laptop in front of me. But I also loved Instagram. And like Instagram, it's it's just decaying. It's slowly decaying. And that's I don't think it's a bad thing. It just it had its moment. But what I mean is if you look at this computer, if you just take a step back and, and don't talk about it in terms of tech, the thing people want from their computers is their stuff. You can call it files, whatever you want to call it. And the stuff that matters to people are not on their computer anymore. You know, on my computer, these are all just random screenshots that I don't actually care about. Uh, you know, I don't I don't save the stuff that matters to my personal and professional life in folders on my desktop anymore. Neither do you. Everything is a URL now. It's my documents, my presentations, my PDFs, my photos. Everything is out there on the internet <laughs> uh, and lives at a URL, and it's not on my on my computer. Like if I if I accidentally drop this computer down the mountain, I would be sad that I lost the resale value of the device, but I wouldn't lose anything, and that's because it's all on the internet. And then again, I know I'm, I may be at the tip of the spear or a little bit of an extreme, but all of our applications are now on the internet too. Like I run a modern technology company and I can, I just use all of the applications in Arc because they're all just web apps. Spotify, I use in Arc. Slack, I use in Arc. Uh, the list goes on. I, everything I need from my computing life, I can get from Arc from the internet because none of it is on my computer anymore. And in fact, most of the stuff that's on my computer, they're just Electron apps. And, and for those of you who don't know about Electron, essentially that just means is something like Superhuman or Figma or Notion or Discord. All of these products are actually secretly just web browsers that have been essentially white labeled to look like native applications, but they're just web apps. And that's why I can use Spotify, for example, or Slack in my browser. And that's not a bad thing. That's an unbelievably exciting thing. This is what we mean is, it's not that there's anything wrong with my MacBook. It's just from a bygone era. We are long live the web. The internet has had a resurgence. And we think the next great computing platform is right in front of us and it's the internet. All of the developer, the best developers and designers are building for the web. All of the really exciting macro trends in technology, if you're excited about transformer neural networks or blockchain technologies or whatever it is that gets you going, uh, it all takes place through the internet and it all takes place through an internet client, a web browser. And so really our hypothesis is that the reason that we're missing we're missing something called an internet computer, whatever that looks like, because our computing lives have moved beyond this hunk of metal. And, and it's really exciting to think about a world in five years, whether it's ARC or another product and company where when I come to Switzerland to visit my in-laws once a year, 
I don't need to lug around this machine. I can free myself from the machine because I can go up to my in-laws computer in there, you know, in that back office. I can tap my finger on the on the device or I can toss it a glance and whoosh. My computer comes down from the internet, comes down from the clouds and is right there on that machine because all of the stuff I need, all of my tools, all of my files, all of my people, my teams, all of those things are out there on the internet too. So it doesn't matter where I access it from. And so if you go back and you look at ARC and you look at it through that lens, I think you can probably see, uh, you can see the seeds of that and you can see why the browser company is called the browser company. Um, but not just because we're building a web browser, but we because we think the future of computing is on the internet and browsers are going to be at the foundation of that. But really what we're building is an internet computer. And and exciting part of that is um, there we just found a lot of people who believe in that and believe in us. Uh, we just raised a round of funding from uh, Mike Krieger. Uh, Mike Krieger, Instagram co-founder. Just to have something to look at. Um, Mike is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful human. Uh, just a lovely person who shares our values um, and also <laughs> happened to co-found Instagram and, and was its CTO uh, until it sold to Facebook and, and a long time after that. And and not only Mike, uh, but we also raised money from the CEO and co-founder of Shopify, uh, the CEO and co-founder of Pinterest, the CEO and co-founder of Slack, the CTO and co-founder of Slack, uh, the CEO front, uh, the for, the the Camille Ricketts, who was the kind of first storytelling community person, brilliant at Notion, uh, and 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 you know I don't mean to list these people to sound like a Coachella lineup, and, and we didn't raise money from these people just to, to to raise money from the fanciest people we could find. It's because if again if you look at what we're doing, not as building a new web browser, but building a new type of computer for the internet then we need to go raise money from all of the people who are making, who have made and are making that future internet and that future computing life. And even if you go back to our Series A, our Series A wasn't raised from VC funds. Uh, it was raised from uh, the co-founders of Stripe and the founder of Zoom and, uh, God, I'm going to miss it, you know, the the C you know the founder of Figma and the CEO of Notion and, and all of these people because that's the future. And that future isn't on our local computer. No one's making Windows apps. No one's making Mac apps. I mean, some people are making Mac apps, but really people are building for the internet and uh, just feel so grateful that they're, uh, that we get to learn from, from all these folks. Uh, uh, and, and on top of that, just grateful. I mean, it's a recession right now. It was, I, we did not expect to be raising money in this moment. And um, it wasn't only all these new folks, but folks like Nabil and Jeff and uh, you know who you are. All of the people that have come back and backed us again and again, um, we're just we're just really grateful. And I, I wanted to end by just saying I'm thankful for everyone watching this video. If you've been watching this long, we owe you a big hug um, because uh, whether you're friends or family or uh, someone that's been following art from the beginning or someone just loves the product or a new friend from the internet, it really is a David and Goliath thing going on. We are going up against Apple. We are going up against Google. We are going up against Microsoft. And uh, we can't do that unless we have, unless, you know, we're just a, bun a handful of people in a proverbial room trying our best. Like we need the extended, extended crew. And if you're watching this, you're part of that. And so thank you. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to record another one of these videos in three years uh, again and, and see where we are. And um, yeah, see you on the internet. Thank you so much.